Having some knowledge of the elements of design, as well as the principles of design, is a benefit to any photographer shooting any kind of photographic work. The principles of design is the ways in which an artist or designer uses the elements of design. While not the subject of today's talk, these are terms that you should be familiar with. Emphasis, balance, alignment, contrast, repetition, proportion, movement. What I am going to be concerned with today is the elements of design. The elements of design are the fundamental parts or aspect of a work of art or a piece of design that are used in the composition of that work. So it's how the two-dimensional design is composed, the elements that it comprises it. One of those is line. I should tell you that this is illustrated with black and white photographs from the first half of the 20th century from some of the canons of photography from that period of time. Line can be defined as form with width and length, but no depth. Line shows length and direction, and it shows edges. So you can see the lines in the work in this Paul Strand photograph. Not only the repetition of lines that you see here, but then the lines created by the shadows, and they have lines within them, etc. The use of that repetition of line really makes this photograph. Shape is created by enclosing a line or by a color and value. It has defined edges. It can be organic or geometric. Look at the looming trapezoidal shapes in the top half of this picture that give weight to the image. They give a seriousness to this photograph. Or value. Value is essentially tone. It's the amount of white or black in a color or tone. And in this case, the use of value here to define the shapes the ceramic bowls that Paul Strand photographed in 1915. Form, that the shape itself provides some aesthetic value. You can see that in the underside of a sink photographed by Edward Weston here in 1926. It's not the subject matter that makes this photograph interesting. It's the shapes, it's the forms, it's the circles, the lines, the ovals, and the other shapes. It's the form over the content. Texture speaks about surface quality, about a varied pattern. You can see Edward Weston's photograph here of dunes in Oceano. In the foreground, you can see the pattern created by wind and moving sand, and that smooths out in the background, so you have a contrast here of different kinds of textures. Proportion is the feeling of unity created when all parts, the sizes, the scale, the amounts, and numbers of objects in an image relate well and relate with each other. Edward Weston's piece here where he plays off the idea of scale with the shell in the foreground and the horizon in the background that's difficult to define in terms of distance and size. He's playing one scale off of another to create a sense of harmony. Contrasts speak about differences, things that differ in tone in value, in shape, in size, in emphasis. You can see contrast used to the extreme in this Willard Van Dyke photograph, pitting the light-colored smokestacks against the deep, dark values of the sky in the background. Pattern is the repeating of an object or symbol all over a work of art. You can see overlapping patterns in this Edward Western photograph of kelp and pebbles on a beach, where the pebbles create a pattern of circles and ovals, and then that is suggested and repeated by the kelp itself, using organic shapes. Well, two approaches to pattern is repetition and rhythm.
Repetition works with patterns to make an artwork seem visually active. The repetition of elements of design creates unity or pattern combined with variation. Variety is using several elements of design to hold the viewer's attention and to guide the viewer's eye through and around the work of art. Here you can see a central focal point as you have lines that lead us up to this object, but then it radiates out in a varied pattern, making each layer seemingly unified and connected with the other. Space is the feeling of depth or shallowness in a work of art. You can see the spaciousness here in Edward Weston's photograph, the repetition of the pattern of the tomatoes in the foreground as they lead us back into that background space. Even the use of a horizon line here is an indication of depth in space. Be a much different picture if he moved his viewfinder in such a way that it did not include the horizon line. It would flatten out the picture. Positive and negative space. Positive space is generally space that visually seems to protrude. It's usually filled space and it's generally foreground, though there are exceptions to all of those. Negative space is generally space that visually seems to recede, that it goes back. It's generally empty space and it's usually in the background, but again, there's exceptions to those rules. Edward Weston's photograph here of the three bowls. Generally, dark objects recede, light objects protrude. Visually, these objects we know are in the foreground and they want to come forward, but at the same time, their dark values, they tend to recede. The more you look at this picture, it almost becomes a little bit like an optical illusion. Again, an element of space is either depth distance, or flatness. Here we can see Ansel Adams' photographs of the Grand Teton Mountains, and part of what makes this image impressive is its sense of scale, and you get that as the Snake River leads us back into the background of the picture there, it wanders back, and then we have these sort of great, huge, magnificently scaled mountains. Well, it's the depth of this space that provides some of that drama. Conversely, it's the flatness in this Tina Madotti photograph. She was involved with politics in Mexico and in Italy, where she's from. And this essentially was her portrait of the Mexican Revolution. Balance is the distribution of visual weight of objects, colors, or textures as well as space. Playing one kind of shape, one kind of tone or color off of one another, balancing the different parts. This Ansel Adams photograph is a good example of that, where there are a couple of more domineering focal points, but plenty of other points in the photograph that capture our attention and move our eye across the frame. One of the kinds of balance is a symmetry, where both sides, or top and bottom, are equal. You see that again in an Edward Weston photograph of a toilet bowl. If you split this photograph down the center, you have more or less equal sides on left and right. When Weston looked at a photograph like this, what he would talk about is beauty. He would talk about photographing the thing itself. What he meant by that is he would strip it of its intended meanings, its connotations, or its denotative meanings, and just look at the objects for its own intrinsic values. When you can do that with this image, it's really quite beautiful. But I know it's a stretch for many people to say, oh, well, that toilet is beautiful. Well, it's more about the shape and the form, the tone, the value, and the symmetry of the composition than it is about a toilet, per se. Well, asymmetry is the sides are different, but still look balanced. 
another Weston photograph where he plays the shadow and juxtapose that with the person he's photographing. They play off of one another visually. They balance each other out. That's an asymmetrical balance. Or the idea that you can have a dominating focal point. Another Edward Weston photograph, his portrait of the Mexican artist Diego Rivera. And you see part of one of Diego Rivera's paintings in the background, but his presence in the foreground dominates this composition. The background is purely background space. It may relate back to the foreground, but the foreground person is the focal point in this picture. Generally speaking, when people appear in photographs, they become focal points, even if they're a tiny part of the picture. It gives us something that we identify with. Harmony or unity is the feeling that all of the parts of a work of art come together and create a sense of unity or harmony or even completeness. Imogen Cunningham's photograph triangles here, so you can see her nude. And you see the different triangles. You see the triangle of the breast, but then also notice the way she's used the edge here to create a triangle and value to create a triangle here. Well, these aren't quite triangular shapes. They're mimic or something close to that. As you see the negative space in the background, we have another little triangle there and some trapezoidal shapes. But the title triangle refers as much as anything to form more than it does content. The rule of thirds is simply the idea that if you divide a photograph into thirds, that it tends to have a sense of unity or balance. This Ansel Adams photograph, essentially, if you look, you have two thirds of the picture, more or less, divided by a horizontal line and then one third of the picture. And then even within those frames, it's kind of divided into equal thirds as well. But it's simply looking at some basic geometry as a way to make a image seem unifying. And lastly, while this isn't really an official term of the elements of design, I want to talk about framing. When you're making photographs, it's absolutely every bit as important to understand what to exclude from an image as to what to include. As a photographer, we're essentially walking around with a little rectangular frame that we move around and essentially can take renderings of parts of the world as we move that little frame around. One of my former teachers, Henry Wessel Jr., used to simplify the act of photography by saying, it depends where you stand and when you press the button. And that's true, but where you stand is an important decision. Whether you stand at your normal height or get down low or get up on a ladder to give you a different vantage point, all of those impact your final photograph. As well as the time, if Ansel Adams had made this photograph a half hour sooner or a half hour later and you didn't see the moon in the background, the photograph wouldn't seem as dramatic. And certainly the use of shadows here is something that is based on the time of day as well. But understanding what to exclude from the picture as well. I don't know, but he could have been photographing this from a parking lot or on a trail with other people, and if he included their heads in the foreground, the picture probably wouldn't have been as interesting. So being aware of not only what you include in the picture, but what you don't include. My general sense, if something's not important and it will be a distraction to the things that are important to the photograph, then you should look for ways to eliminate them from your vantage point or from the perspective of the camera.